Welcome to Girl vs. Motorcycle. Today we're going to tackle the oil change. Now, how to know when to change your oil. Uh, black sludge, when you check it, when you check your oil, if it's really dark and it's kind of thick, it's time to change your oil. Uh, other signs for me is I noticed my shifting was off a little bit. Now, it makes me wonder, hey, what does the engine oil have to do with shifting? Well, being that my engine is not a typical Harley engine, I only have to change one oil, one fluid. Yes, one oil to rule them all. So according to the manual on the V-Rod, we have a, a wet sump, an integrated transmission, a gear-driven primary, and a wet clutch. And what that means is that with the design of this engine is that the engine oil also lubricates this transmission and the primary. Oh, do you want to do that now? Okay. So I only have to change one fluid, it's real nice. Now, typical Harley engines, I think, are the three. You gotta change the engine oil, the primary, and the transmission. Now, if, since I don't have a bike to do that with, <laughs> what I'm gonna do is I'll link the John Maxwell video where he changes the oil in the description below, and you can see him change all three. Uh, it's also good because he talks about different oils, different options. You know, if you're somewhere where it gets really cold and what you should, what oil you should use in the winter, that kind of thing. So it's super informative. Um, it's just great. Um, and he talks about the Harley oils and all that stuff. Like, you know, use whatever your service mile te tells you. Um, it's totally fine. Personally, I use the Amsoil because. Uh, doing the research in the V-Rod forum, which is 1130.com for you V-Riders who may not know that. It's a great place, great resource. A lot of the guys were using the Amsoil and noticed it different in shifting. Like the shifting was more more fluid, just easier to do. So hence when I said, oh, my shift is getting off, I really need to change my oil. And my oil isn't like, it's dark, it's not sludgy, so that's good. So we'll get to doing that. Um, the other thing I like to use is a K&N filter as well, and when we get back to the garage, I'll show you that and why. Um, oh, but you also might be wondering, why am I doing the intro on the bike today? Well, in your service bay, it's always recommended that you get the bike to temp before doing your oil change. So, you know, you could run it for like five, ten minutes, get it, get it nice and hot. Um, but... Tom Max will also recommend it if you can just ride the bike for about 20, 30 minutes. So I figured I'd give that a shot to see what the differences are. And also makes it for a way more interesting intro of the day. Right? Right? <laughs> yep. So, and we'll, so what we'll do is to, and yeah, getting the bike to temp. Yes, the bike is high. Yes, you have to get under it. But this is where just basic science comes into play. The outside of the bike will cool down faster than the inside of the bike, so your oil will stay hot for a little bit. <laughs> so we'll get back to the garage and let the bike cool a little bit before we get up in there. We'll change the oil. Sound good? All right. See you in the garage. Okay, so bike's just about ready to go. Awesome. We can, it's the point where like it's warm, we can touch it, but like don't rest your hands on it. <laughs> so you still wanna be careful when you're under there working. Um, tools you would need. A 17 millimeter socket for the drain plug on the V-Rod. Um, you do, let's see, a, don't forget your torque wrench. Torque wrench set to 25 foot pounds for the drain plug, again. <laughs> uh, let's see. Oh, your oil. Your new oil. There you go. Uh, the V-Rod takes five quarts. So, um, your gallon jug and one of these, you should be good. It, with whatever oil you choose to get. Um, oh yeah, your oil pan. To put your old oil in. Boom. Bottle. Shop bags. Always good to have. You're gonna make a mess, I promise. Speaking of messes, I don't always wear gloves when I work on the bike. I'm just not, it drives me nuts. But for oil, 
I was advised against getting it out so you'd be eating oil for like a week. Um, what else? Oh, and the oil filter. So uh, I said something about the Canaan and why I like it. Um, one reason it's kind of cool is that it comes pre-lubed. Um, anytime you install an oil filter, you want to lube it up before you put it in. Um, you know, it's it's a nice feature, I guess. Um, but the kicker for me in the Canaan is right here. It's a 17 millimeter bolt on this. Now with the B-Rod, the oil filter, and we'll, I'll show you that it is under the bike and then it's hard to get to. It is hard to reach, it is hard to maneuver. You know, you're only supposed to hand tighten it. You can barely get your hand around it. And it's oil filters bound to be slippery for some reason, dirt, grime, oil. So I love that. First of all, it's 17 millimeters, just like the green plugs. They're like, hey, you only need one wrench. <laughs> but it helps get the grip. Um, uh, for the regular oil filters, there is an oil wrench. It's like a cap that goes over it, and you can put just the end of your socket wrench on there and help take it off and get it on. Um, but it's so cramped in there, it's hard to get that in there too. Uh, to be fair, like this is kind of short, but it's still too long. It's tight. It's a tight fit, you'll see. But I like it because it can grip it. So it's it's a selling point for me. Um, what else? With the oil filters, manual says don't use anything, I think, below 10 uh, microns, something like that, which is basically how, how much the filter can filter, uh, minute particles and stuff. Uh, I think the Amsoil and the K&Ns run close to 20, so you can find there. And uh, that's it, so let's get under the bike and get working. And in case you're wondering what that noise is, that's my at-home made swamp cooler, because <laughs> it is hot in my garage. So, sorry for that, but what are you gonna do? It's Vegas, so let's get cracking. Okie dokie, so as you can see, it's cramped on here. Um, so yes, for the V-Rod, you wanna do it on the side stand. And at first it's like, it doesn't seem right. But then when you're down here, see how cramped it is? If the bike is upright, it is more cramped down here. But also the drain plug, as you can see, is off to the side anyway. See that side? Oh, that's still kind of warm. Yeah, it's off to the side anyway. So it makes sense. That's where it's gonna drain out and put it. So, what I like to do is pull the pan out, get this at least loose, and that's always the struggle when you're down here. So, you know, whatever you got to do to manhandle this, this is where you need leverage. Let's see if this block of wood helps. Get it. See, it's loose. Okay. Hopefully, it's enough to be finger loose. Because what you want to do is, yep. Now, it's happened before to me. So be careful. Because when you loosen this, it's going to pouring out, obviously. And also, there's a washer that you want to keep up. With. Oh, you know what I forgot? So, what helps drain the oil is go to your dipstick and just open that up. And that'll let air get in so I can push the fluid out. So you can see it's starting to seep. I just opened that up. So, and then also be very careful. It's gonna come out. And also, I'm very much not left handed. Oh, but I'm gonna try it anyway. And then you guys can't see anything, but you get the point. See that there's a little copper thing there? That's it, that's the washer. It does feel still very hot, so I'm being careful. But I would like to make sure that washer doesn't go with it, because that happened to me once. Yep, washer was at the bottom of the old oil. So, we, yeah. That washer does not want to stay with that bolt, and it would be nice if it did. Because I don't want to go fishing for it. Oh, shop right The shop rag will probably help me grab that without. 
Come on, get on there. Oh, there comes the oil. Oh, and it went towards the camera. Oh god. But I got the I got the I got the washer, you guys. Oh oil. So that's gonna do that. I'm let that drain. Now what I like to do is I'll let that drain for as long as it's gonna drain. So I'll let it do its thing. And sometimes it takes a little longer to get it totally out. So what I'm gonna do is turn off that camera and clean the base that now has oil over it, because you're bound to make a mess, like I said. <laughs> and then we'll come back and see how drain does and then we'll take the um oil filter off. Great, awesome. See you guys in a minute. Okay, once you let the oil drain for a while, see it's still dripping. Um, make sure you uh, clean out your drain, clean up your drain plug a little bit, clean up any grime, the old thing. Just you know, like I said, take the shop rag, just go around and make sure the washer's still good. Um, I think normally, you know, when you take it to Harley, all those places, they actually put new washers on there. Washer's fine, <laughs> unless you see a crack in the washer or something like that. The washer's fine. Don't worry about that. If you want to change it. Ask them for a washer. Pretty easy. Not that bad. So looking at that, that's cleaned up a bit. Oh, it's cleaned up a bit. So uh, you would think the smart thing for me to do is move this oil pan, right? She <laughs> she. Uh, yeah. Why don't we do that? Because oh, yep, and reveal the mess that I have made. Which I said is pretty typical for me. Pretty typical. See, I still dripping a bit. Actually, normally I leave it longer, or do the um, while that's open, do the filter too. But with it being cramped on here and it's hard to get the cameras to look good under here, I figured I'd just do this. There's nothing wrong with either or. You know, if you take the filter off, same thing. It's gonna finish dripping out all the oil. So, at that finger tight as much as you can, especially with the slippery hands and gloves. So make sure your washer's there. Uh, and then get your torque wrench out. Now if you're lucky, you have a smaller torque wrench in there that does 25 foot pounds. I do not. So this is where stuff gets challenging. But I've clearly done it before, so actually let's do my little wait, I need this trick. Hold on. There we go. This is. Oh, that's pretty tight. All right. Okay. Listen for the snap. The ting. There it is. That one's one of those quiet ones. So, I'm gonna try to take a picture of this, you guys. Maybe get one of these cameras up there to get a good look. There it is. That's your oil, my oil filter. Oil filter in the V-Rod right there. Hanging in the butt. So, this is where I would prefer to have the oil pan under it, but it's so hard to do that I see more shop rights in my future. Here. This just might be the best way to handle this. Okay. Now the bolt I'm talking about, so it's over here. when you do this you're gonna spend a lot of time on your back so and they make uh backrest pads for garage folks if you are so inclined i'm clearly too dumb for that ha 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 so it's right here 
so I'm just having to find it. Oh, I got on there. I said it's loose. Now the thing with the oil fits too, they tell you, you don't want to hand tighten it, which is true. So this should not be that hard to loosen. But it's just about getting in there, I'm doing it. See, that goes coming loose. There. Now, oil's gonna come out. So, shop rags it is. Because of where it is, it's probably gonna layer dip right on my wrist. And right now, on the shop rags. Look at that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, preferably having the pan under there. Because this is not, it's not good, you guys. I'm very bad on movie cameras. Oh, I got it. Okay. <laughs> Even though I have a mess. It's already messy. Oh, that was most of it. Huh? Oh, nope. There it goes. Woo. Oil. There's that. There's that. So, now that everything's taken out, all the old stuff is out. You can put in a drain plug, stuff like that. Remember I talked about oil filter? Moving it? Okay, so, oil filter. Um, so this one comes sealed. I don't know if they all come sealed, because I only bought these, but presumably. But you can see kind of in the light that it's a little bit already, but I want to show you um, I think you can do it with the older, I can buy it, but me being a stickler, I'm going to take a dab of the new oil on my finger, I'm not showing you because the camera's not going but oiled finger, this is what you're doing. So what you're doing is making the seal, that's going to help actually make them and seal them, and make them all love each other and stay together. So, that's really all that is. Um, again, taking it out of my temporary container. <laughs> I guess you'll see eventually, but here, yeah, make sure it's nice and white. So there's that. Now we put it on the bike. So for the v rod people, this sucks. Some people, actually, you know, smart people have a lift. Also, maybe a lift that's wide enough to put it on the kickstand so that you can do this. Ugh. But, but for us DYs at home, new to doing this stuff by ourselves, kind of deal. And yes, getting it in here is also a pain in the, you know, circus, I guess. So yes, we're gonna try to get that screwed in. That's the tough part too, because now I've got greasy hands. Ooh, wait, did I get in there? And you can't necessarily, you know, hold it from above or get your hands around it. Now I've seen where the oil filter is on other Harleys, and let's just say I hate those people. <laughs> It's kind of just right on the left side of the engine. <laughs> you can just stick your hand in there and grab it. I'm like, you guys suck. But I guess that's what you get for getting a fancy engine. You get fancy placement for your oil filter. So as I'm starting to feel it actually tighten, which is good, that means it's not cross-threaded or anything like that. I've actually never had a problem almost cross-threading it or anything like that. But like I said before, I don't, you know, typical woman situation. We don't have a lot of finger strength. So, I, and look, see, covered in oil, slippery AF. So, 
And he tells you a hand tight. It says, use your hand tight and then three quarters of a turn, which is like, wait, what? In what universe? So I do take the socket, but I don't over tighten it. I do it to somewhere. See, that seems super loose to me. Okay. Also, I swear I have a sh shorter socket. <laughs> And that's the thing. Also, my wrench doesn't have that much room to travel, so it's like, oh, let me see, it's starting to get tight. All right, I do have a shorter one, but it's an angled one. Yeah. All right, this one is shorter, but the thing is, it also has like a mechanism where it bends. So sometimes it bends on me when I don't want it to. But this might be the time that I want it to. See, does that? Ooh, fancy, huh? Let's see. Okay, now I'll get that back on the socket. Uh, see, there you go. It starts to feel tight, then give it. That's good. All right, now I feel good. It doesn't feel like. Super tight. Let's see. Shouldn't have to kill myself to loosen it. So let's try that. Let's see. See? Perfect. So let me go back and tighten it back that little bit that I loosened it. Alright, yeah, there you go. <sighs> nice. There you go. Done. Woo! Filter is in. Your filter is in. Your drain plug is in. Next. We're gonna put oil back in the bike. How exciting is that? Whoo! Okay, now here comes the easiest part of the whole thing. Putting fresh oil in the bike. So, you have your dipstick. I usually, I wiped around here a little bit, get some of that old dump on there, off of there. Have your funnel. Very important because nobody's that good. There you go. And you want to pour it slow. That way it doesn't bubble back if it's time to fill. You can even see it too. Like, oh, here it comes. Four quarts are in. I have a half. The half this has like not a lot in here. So what I want to do is put this in there so it's a little over four. Because I don't want to get it to five just yet. And I'll tell you why. Because I may not have gotten all the oil out. It says it holds five quarts. Maybe it does. Maybe there's more. You know, everything depends on environmental situations. So, what you want to do next, after you put, if you take five, put four, four and a quarter, four and a half in, you know, or if you take five and a half, you know, just don't put the whole, like, oh, I take five and a half and dump it all in there. Because it has to settle, it has to run. It's going to change a little bit. So, after you put your oil in, run your bike for a little bit. Run it. Hey, remember operating temp? Boom. So, that's what we're going to do next. But don't forget, you got to put put the dipstick back in before you run it. Or else you're going to have a two. So, definitely do that. Close it up. 
brings it up, close it up. Make sure, remember, pull that filter's on, bank plug's on, everything's on, and close it tight. Or else you're gonna have a big, big attachment. So, yeah, once it's been running for like five minutes or so, should be good enough to actually check the oil. Now, D-Rods and my Q-Gen both have to be upright to check the oil. Let me turn off these lights. Um, don't advise doing these in shorts. <laughs> these pumps get really hot. I was working in a garage, my garage is hot. We talked about this. Ugh. But yeah, so check your oil. Remember, when you check your oil, make sure your dipstick is fully heated. Again, check your manual, your owner's manual or your service manual, um, about checking the oil, whether your bike has to be upright when you check it or not. Um, like I said, both my bikes have to be upright. My husband's bike has to be on the side stand. Um, just depends. Uh, a couple years ago, a guy at a Harley dealership somewhere in Utah said it's the solid sticks are the ones that have to be upright and if you have a flexible stick that should be on side. I don't know if that's true, but we'll see. So let's see. Yep, that's pretty low. It's below half a quart. So I'm gonna add half that other bottle. So I'm gonna do that. Uh, let's see if we can do that trick. Out, put stick on filler, <laughs> drop funnel, <laughs> all fun stuff here. So I added uh, a little more than half. Again, you don't want to go too crazy. Oops. And then at this point, it's safe to check it as it is. I have to run it again when you're topping it off. Ugh. I do have to sit on it, don't stand up again. That's for sure. Ooh. Also, no, she's not in neutral. There. That's because I had to run. It's above the out of half a quart line and but still below the full line. So what I'm gonna do, because it doesn't say add anymore, is um, leave it like this for now. Um, I'll go out riding either tonight or sometime tomorrow or when I go to work tomorrow and on the way back check the oil again to see where it's at. Um, I, I, to be honest with you, the last couple of times I checked the oil, I changed the oil. I've done the same thing where I've gotten it pretty close to full and then left it. And then the next couple of times I ride, when I get home, I check it when I'm done riding for the day and top it off if needed. Um, I think the last time I did that, I only had to top it off like a couple of times. So, or a couple of, I only had to top it off once. So, I mean, that's it. Change your oil. It's pretty easy. So now you get to look at my sweaty self because my garage is hot. But that's changing the oil. It's pretty easy. Um, don't make the mistakes I made. <laughs> no, <laughs> it's a little bit messy. If you like, I did get oil under there, under the bike. Um, Make sure you clean up before you move the bike so you don't get any on the tires because it'll make it really slippery. Um, I wiped it down really good and then I'll let some Simple Green sit on it so it breaks up the grease. Um, also super important, do not throw your oil in the trash. It's not where it goes. Um, oil is recyclable. Oil you will take take to any auto parts store. They will take it off your hands and recycle it. Um, what I do is that you know my oil pan has a nice spout. 
I actually put it back in the empty oil bottles that I just used. Now that they're empty, pour that in there and then take them to the store at that. I take that and the oil, old oil filter. Um, take all that, they'll take it right off your hands to take care of it for you so you don't throw it in the trash or anything like that. Um, yeah, that's probably it. That's all I got. So I'm gonna repackage my oil, put my old oil in that bag, clean up, and then take a shower. So I'm sweating and it's horrible and nobody should need to see this. <laughs> uh, well, happy oil changing and just get out and ride. We'll see you next time.